Hi everyone and welcome to Shugen Science. In this video, we'll walk through some of the steps involved in sexual reproduction in humans, including fertilization, implantation, and some of the early stages of embryonic development. So what I've shown here is kind of a half view of the female reproductive anatomy. We have the uterus, fallopian tube, as well as an ovary here. And the reproductive process really begins in the ovaries. This is where we see the female gamete, otherwise known as eggs. And what sets gametes apart from other cells in the body is that they are haploid cells. So they only contain half the chromosomes required to survive. So before anything can happen in terms of reproduction, we need to get one of those eggs or gametes out of the ovaries. And that is part of the role of the menstrual cycle in women. So during part of the menstrual cycle, hormones are secreted that allow for the development of a follicle inside the ovaries. And then within that follicle, you're gonna see the maturation of a single egg. Eventually, additional hormonal changes will cause the egg to burst from the follicle and be released from the ovaries. So this step is known as ovulation. And without ovulation, none of the other events could happen. So once the egg is released from the ovary, it enters this space here. And technically the ovaries are not directly connected to the fallopian tubes. So the fallopian tubes have these little finger-like projections called fimbrae, which will help kind of sweep that ovulated egg up into the fallopian tube. And if that process doesn't happen, a sperm could actually fertilize an egg outside of the uterus and implant into this extra uterine space, in which case we would consider that um, to be an unviable pregnancy, often known as an ectopic pregnancy. And so if that process is successful, the egg will enter the fallopian tube and that is where fertilization can actually take place. So these two cells here, the sperm and the egg, those are of course known as gametes. And when they meet in the fallopian tube, then they can undergo the second process required for reproduction, which is called fertilization. So fertilization takes those two haploid gametes, both the sperm and the egg have half the chromosomes required to survive, and then it turns them into a single-celled zygote, which is diploid. So now it has all of the chromosomes required to survive. Next, that single-celled zygote is going to undergo a series of very rapid cell divisions called cleavage. And it's going to produce a new structure that contains approximately 16 cells called the morula. What you'll notice though is that the 16-celled morula is pretty much the same size as the single-celled zygote. That's because cleavage is a special type of cell division where we have rapid cell division without cell growth. So interphase is cut short so that the cell doesn't have time to grow in between divisions. All of this, by the way, is happening in the fallopian tube. And at no point here is a woman considered to be pregnant. Pregnancy doesn't occur until that morula enters the uterus and begins to implant in the uterine or endometrial lining. So eventually the morula will enter the uterus. And as it does so, it's going to undergo a couple of stages of cell division that will then cause those cells to differentiate into two different layers. We have this outer layer here that will become the fetal portion of the placenta, and we have the inner layer that will actually form the embryo or fetus itself. So this entire structure 
is known as the blastocyst. And then eventually that blastocyst is going to implant into the endometrial lining. And now finally, we can say pregnancy has begun. Now, sometimes you'll see on online sources, they use the word conception to mark the timeline of events. Well, conception is a bit of a vague term because some people say that fertilization is the beginning of conception, whereas others say implantation is when conception begins. So to avoid confusion, let's just use these two terms. So the timeline from fertilization to implantation is approximately 10 days. So after having unprotected sex, it could be approximately 10 days until pregnancy actually occurs. But even at that point, you probably wouldn't test positive on a pregnancy test unless it's really sensitive because the thing that happens immediately following implantation is that blastocyst is then going to start secreting a really important hormone that will ma maintain the pregnancy called human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG. HCG will then target the corpus luteum inside the ovaries and it's going to maintain that structure so that it can keep secreting the estrogen and progesterone progesterone required to have a successful pregnancy. And it's this hormone here that pregnancy tests tend to detect. So typically two weeks after having unprotected sex, that's when implantation has fully occurred. And that is when you could probably get a positive result on a pregnancy test. This is also when you might notice a skipped period. So if you are pregnant, then this is the first kind of sign of that. Now, still nowhere in this point or at any of these points though, would we consider these cells to be specialized. All of the cells in these structures are considered to be stem cells, meaning they have no specific job. The next step is going to change that. So step six, the one that occurs about a week after implantation, that is known as gastrulation. And gastrulation is basically where this blastocyst undergoes a few different folding processes to form a new structure called a gastrula. And it consists of three layers and cells within each of those layers are now specialized. So the gastrula has specialized cells. The cells in this innermost layer, the endoderm, they'll go on to form different tissues than the cells in the middle layer or mesoderm or the cells in the outer layer or ectoderm. So now we no longer have stem cells um, and that's about a week after implantation or if we're thinking from the timeline of fertilization at about week three. Next, the gastrula will undergo even more folding, a process known as neurulation. And then it's going to stretch out to form this long tube known as the neural tube. Now, the neural tube, again, contains several layers with specialized cells and one end of the neural tube will eventually go on to form the brain and then the elongated part of the neural tube will eventually go on to form the spinal cord. So we have the foundations of important structures starting to form after this neurulation process. Now neurulation begins around week three and is finished around week four after fertilization. So that's about two to three weeks after implantation or after pregnancy has actually begun. And this is also where we're gonna start to see potentially electrical impulses produced by this neural tube. It will literally start to pulsate. 
And now that can be misconstrued as a heartbeat. There's no heart technically, there's no brain, there's really no anything in the neural tube, but because it produces those electrical impulses, it could be picked up by some sensitive machinery. Um, however, not with a simple stethoscope at this point. And then eventually that neural tube will undergo many more changes and then by about six to eight weeks after fertilization, we're gonna start to see a structure that looks a little bit more familiar. And now we can start referring to it as an embryo. Okay, so to quickly summarize some of the steps involved in this process, we are of course going to start with an egg, the female gamete, and once that egg undergoes the process of ovulation, it's going to enter the fallopian tube where it could then come across a sperm cell. So if these two gametes come together, the female gamete being the egg and the male gamete being the sperm, those two haploid cells could undergo a process known as fertilization to produce a single diploid cell shown here known as a zygote. Once the zygote has formed, it's going to undergo a series of rapid cell divisions without cell growth, known as cleavage. And that is going to produce a structure called the morula, which consists of 16 undifferentiated cells. The morula will then slowly make its way from the fallopian tube down into the uterus. Where it will begin to differentiate into a couple of different layers, which collectively are known as the blastocyst. The blastocyst is what going to implant into the uterine lining. And it is at this point, anywhere around 10 days after fertilization, that a woman is said to be pregnant. So then at approximately day 14, there will be high enough levels of human chorionic gonadotropin to be detected with a pregnancy test. Those hormones that are secreted will maintain the corpus luteum and allow the pregnancy to continue. So now begins pregnancy. We can kind of start the clock over at day one. In about a week or so, that blastocyst is undergoing a couple of different folding processes known as gastrulation. to form a three-layered structure called the gastrula. And it is at this point where we are considered to have specialized cells. Each cell within the specific layers of the gastrula will go on to become a specific tissue or organ system. And then after another week or so, neurulation will begin And neurulation is the process where this gastrula undergoes further folding and pinching off to form this elongated structure called the neural tube. The neural tube will eventually go on to form the foundations of the brain and spinal cord. And then eventually towards the end of the first trimester with continued embryonic development, we can refer to this little guy here as an embryo. The embryo has the foundations of all of the organ systems that it needs to survive. Although of course, by the end of that first trimester, it wouldn't have any chance of survival if miscarriage or early labor were to happen at that point in time. And that's the whole process. Of course, we can talk about what happens in the second and third trimesters. Um, but these are some of those initial structures required in order to get there. Thanks everyone.